Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here with another daily devotion for Thursday, January 21st, 2021. And again, following 40 Days of Community by Pastor Rick Warren. We are still in the theme, we're connected to grow together by forgiving each other. Mm, hard thing to do. Ephesians 4.32, Paul writes, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. The writers write, Fellowship without forgiveness is impossible. As believers, we're called to settle our relationships with each other, 2 Corinthians 5.18. We need to constantly forgive others and receive forgiveness from others or we'll give up in despair, 2 Corinthians 2.7. Whenever we're hurt by someone, we must make a choice. Will we focus on retaliation or on resolution? The Bible speaks candidly about settling the score. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 In God's economy, it's not enough to say we won't seek revenge. We're to press into the very heart of forgiveness, forgiving each other just as Christ God just as in Christ God forgave you. As you read the Bible, it becomes very clear that forgiveness is not optional for the Christ follower. God sets the standard so high because he knows how much is at stake in your life. Bitterness and unforgiveness. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> you fell over. Okay. I don't know why things are not working for me this morning. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. Okay. It's like teetering. That's really close. Here, you know what? Let me put something behind it so it doesn't fall. There's a thought. <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. God sets a standard so high about forgiveness because he knows what's at stake. Bitterness and unforgiveness are a cancer that will eventually destroy you from the inside out. And I've often said this, that unforgiveness you have unforgiveness in your life, it will eat away at you in the inside, and it will make you physically sick. Forgiveness is a scalpel that removes the tumor of bitterness. That doesn't mean we'll always be able to forgive and be done with it. You may have to keep forgiving again and again until you've known you've released the offender. So if you say you forgive someone and yet you still call, if you still think about them and what they did and you talk about how mad you are at them, forgive again. Try again and again. That's why Jesus says to Peter, to forgive 70 times 70 times 70 times 7. In the book of Colossians, Paul provides the basis and motivation for forgiveness. So this is the reason we forgive. According to Paul in Colossians 3.13, he said, You must make allowance for each other's fault, faults and forgive the person who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive. When we remember the price Jesus paid to forgive us, how can we not forgive? So what does it mean to forgive? First, let's agree it doesn't mean doing some sort of mental gymnastics to erase your hurt, and it doesn't mean pretending that you weren't hurt. So acknowledge what happened, acknowledge what the person did to you, and don't, you know, you don't, it's not forgive and forget. You never forget. Forgiveness means you no longer hold the offense against the offender. It means you've pardoned the debt and you've intentionally chosen to release the one who hurt you. You love deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. So here are a few steps towards forgiveness. Number one, talk to God before talking to the person. Like David in the Psalms, use prayer to vent, to vent vertically to God. Cry out to God, tell him exactly how you feel, and he won't be surprised or upset by your anger. Number two, always take the initiative. It doesn't matter whether you are the offender or the offended. Jesus told us to make the first move. And number three, confess your part of the conflict. If you're serious about restoring a relationship, you should begin with admitting your own mistakes or sin. Jesus said it's the way to see things more clearly. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then, then you can deal with the speck in the other friend's eye. Now, I want you to know that number three step I don't agree with when it comes to adult and child abuse. A lot of you have been hurt because you've been abused physically or emotionally um, by an adult in your past. And so know that you are not at fault at that at all. You were an innocent child and there were others that were at fault, the offender and possibly another adult who wouldn't listen to you when you told them. Or maybe you didn't tell them and you feel guilty about that. You're still not at fault. 
So to me, yes, one, two, and three are very important. When someone attacks us and we're both adults, we need to really look at our part. Maybe we didn't speak up to them when we should have. Um, maybe we uh, kind of brushed the conflict under the rug and so we didn't want to deal with it till it got really, really bad. Or um, whatever part you've played. Sometimes we all play a part in the conflict when we're adults. And as Christians, we're to make the first move to go and say that we apologize for something we said or make space for the other person to be able to apologize to you. Sometimes we don't make space for that other person. We won't talk to them. We won't look at them. We won't interact with them. And that's a passive-aggressive way of not dealing with um, unforgiveness. You just kind of say, nope, not going to deal with it. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we're to make the first move as believers. So the writer's right. Maybe you need to stop right now and have an honest conversation with God about someone you need to forgive. Your heavenly Father knows that it's not easy to let go of your hurts, but you will help. But He will help you and give you the grace to forgive. So do it now. You'll be glad you did. And a lot of times we have to forgive people that have already passed away. Write them a letter. Go to their graveside and read it to them, and let that forgiveness happen. You know, go to God first. It says. Take the initiative. Write a letter to your dad because he abused you in some way. And tell him that you forgive forgive him for what he did. Acknowledge what he did. And then forgive him because if you don't, it just eats you up inside. And you give that offender more power than they deserve. So we grow together in the community of faith by forgiving one another. So take responsibility for your part, again, not if you were a child who was abused. You didn't play a part. But if you're an adult and you've had, you know, conflicts with estranged family members or a co-worker, claim your part, talk to God, and take the initiative to go and try to make amends. If they don't want to, uh, and don't expect an apology back. That's the other thing. If you've done something, go and apologize. And you say, well, they did something too. Well, I'm sure they did. Because in this book, it says that we all have part of the conflict when we're adults. But your job is to um, either apologize or to make a space for them to be able to come to you and say, yeah. You know, you could just simply say, hey, can I talk with you over some coffee? You know, I think we got off on the wrong foot and seemed like we, um, you know, maybe got it in each other's stuff and you know I, I'll take responsibility for anything that I said that maybe you have taken incorrectly or maybe you have um, that has hurt you in some way and then give them that space to apologize don't avoid them because it's just like a cancer it'll grow and it'll get worse so good advice from um, Paul the Apostle and Jesus who tells us to take the initiative and continue to forgive doesn't mean forget doesn't mean going back to an abusive relationship. Mm -mm. It does mean to talk to God, tell him how you're hurt, and then make the initiative to be able to, A, either let that person apologize to you, or B, forgive them for what they've done, and then they may apologize or they may not. There's a lot of people that won't take responsibility for what they've done and said. But it's not your business. Your business is to do your part. Take responsibility for what you've done and make a space where they can apologize. And let them know why you're offended. They may never apologize because some people just can't do it. They don't have the Spirit of God in them. But if you're two believers, you have the Spirit of God in you, and that Spirit will continue to beat that person up, not really physically, but bug them and bug them until they learn how to forgive. So forgiveness is a huge issue. It's a huge issue. So many people live with bitterness and unforgiveness in their life and they go to their grave that way. I don't want to live that way. Jesus paid too much to forgive me. So I want to be able to release myself of someone else's hurt and pain by forgiving them. So I hope this was helpful, helpful for you today. I will be back on Monday. In the meantime, if you want to join me right here at 9 a.m. live stream or you can come into the church in person at 113 Blair Street. We're going to talk about um, our sermon series, What Would Jesus Undo? So, so far we've looked at spiritual indifference. Jesus does not like that. We looked at hollow worship or empty worship last week. And this week we're going to look at the difference between hypocrisy 
and sin. So being a sinner who repents to God is much better to Jesus than being a hypocrite. Yikes. So we're going to take a look at <clears throat> the seven woes that he gives to the, Phar uh, the Pharisees and the religious leaders in the book of Matthew. But we're only going to look at a few of them. And we're going to look at how Jesus calls out their hypocrisy. And I think all of us at one time or another have been, have been hypocrites. But the difference is, is if we realize it, we understand it, and we ask God for forgiveness, then we become a repentant sinner. But to stay a hypocrite... And to live a certain way, picking out other people's problems when you yourself are doing the very same thing, Jesus does not stand for it. And he gives a warning, a very strong warning of what happens to hypocrites. So not going to be a really friendly <laughs> sermon, but, you know, it's in the Word of God, so got to preach it. He definitely would undo hypocrisy. So let's, uh, let's get to it, get to the work of seeing what Jesus says about hypocrisy and learn the warning signs so we can make sure that we're not, when we move down that road of hypocrisy, we stop and we ask God for forgiveness and we repent. Because God's got tons and tons of unlimited grace, but it does not tolerate hypocrisy. So I will see you Sunday at 9. Hope you show up, or at least show up online. It'll be good. Talk to you then. Bye-bye.